Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here with a Tip Tuesday wig chat for you. I would like to talk about long heat friendly synthetics and the challenges that you face with them, some of the things you can do about it, and a tip that might help you increase the longevity of your long heat friendly wig. If you want to know more about this topic and learn more about the wig on my head, which I think is the perfect heat-friendly synthetic for updos, then stick around. This video was actually inspired by a question that I got from a wig sister. She's a new wig wearer and she asked me if she could wear her long heat-friendly wig. It was Tress Allure California Beach Waves outside at the beach will the sun hurt it and she was going to be taking a trip somewhere kind of tropical i can't quite remember but she wanted to know if it would damage it at all to use her heat friendly synthetic that way and i gave her a very long answer because there are a lot of things i think people need to know about long heat friendly synthetics so first of all if you're going to be spending a lot of time out in the sun i think synthetics whether they're regular or heat friendly are definitely the way to go. Human hair will be dramatically impacted by a lot of sunlight. It will, it can oxidize, the color can fade. We pay a lot of money for our human hair wigs and we really want them to last as long as possible. While it is possible to send your wig off to somebody who can tone it, who can recolor it, if you've experienced oxidizing or color fading on your human hair wigs, that's an additional expense. Synthetic wigs do not fade in the sun, maybe after long, long periods of time. I did a comparison of my Girl Mono, uh, Ellen Villa Girl Mono, one of my all time favorite curly synthetics. I had a new one and an old one, and I noticed side by side, the old one was starting to look really dull. It was a few years old, but it's not something that was obvious to the eye until I compared it to a brand new one. So synthetic wigs, wearing them to the beach, wearing them uh, to exercise, wearing them for long periods of time outside, perfect for that because they can handle that. Plus the price point is a little bit less. So that first answer, sun will not damage your synthetic wigs. Actually, I got another comment from another wig sister two days ago and she was told that she cannot wear her synthetics by the oven or in the sun. <laughs> The oven is one thing, and I do have a video talking about how you can actually fry your wig with the oven if you're not careful, but the sun is not going to do that to your synthetic wig. I don't know who told her that, but that's fine. You can wear your synthetics out in the sun. Second, she was going to be taking a trip, and that was the wig she was going to bring with her, and that's where I felt the need to tell her about how hard friction is on long heat-friendly pieces, and if she planned to wear that long, I mean, if I have a review of Tressalore California Beach Waves. It's gorgeous, super long and wavy. And I only wore mine a few times and the ends already started to get frayed and frizzy. I still have to deal with that and I'll make a video for you guys on that. But I wanted her to be aware of that because if she did not have a backup plan, she was going to start to struggle after a day or two with that piece if she wore it for long periods. So here's my tip for you guys. If you have a long heat friendly wig or you don't have one yet, but there's one that you're eyeing and you really want it. But now that you've seen this video, you're a little afraid of it. My first tip is if it's straight, it's much easier to care for than a curly or wavy. You can just take a hot airbrush, a hot comb, some type of heat like that to the very ends to really take care of that frizziness. And because it's straight, you don't have to worry about changing the style. I have a video showing you how to do that. If it's curly or wavy, that's another story and that's more tricky because if you take that kind of heat to a curly or wavy piece, you're going to straighten that piece and it's not easy to get that curl back and you probably can't recreate the curl pattern. So here's what I do. This wig on my head right now is Belle Tress Shakerado in the color brown sugar sweet cream. I think this is the absolutely perfect wig for an updo. It is low density, it doesn't have permatease, it is just fabulous in an updo. Let me show you it.
Now, I put this in the subdo yesterday. I wore it for about four hours yesterday, and then I took it off my head and hung it on my wall. I have a hat rack that I hang my wigs on that I'm currently wearing, and I just plopped it back on my head today. I didn't even have to restyle it, so that's a tip. One of the reasons why, in addition to what I've already stated, why I think this is a great updo wig is it has baby hairs already cut into it. Let me make sure. I'm going to grab my mirror so I can be right in the camera. But look at the at my nape right here. Can you see those little hairs right there? Those are baby hairs and they were already in this wig. So when I put it in an updo, it looks super, super natural. But the challenge really is if you are going to wear your long heat friendly piece down a lot, but you don't want to have to take heat to it, how do you protect those ends just like this? So let me just take this off. I'll take it out so you can see it down, but I want you to see, I took it off just like this, hung it upside down through the wefting onto the hat rack that's on my wall. And then this morning I just took it off the wall and I put it back on. Now I want to, I don't want to pull it out. So I got to be careful how I adjust it. But I mean, so this is because I already did a quick little video for Instagram with this. This is like the third or fourth time I put it on my head while it's been still in the updo. It's starting to get a little messy, but it works perfect. So if you're looking for something super easy and you have a wig that you're always going to wear in an updo, just keep it in the updo. All right, let's talk about these fibers. Let me pull out the claw clip. All I have is a claw clip in. That is it. So I can show this to you down. I do have a review of Shakerado on YouTube. You can see it's super like bust chest level for me super long, super low density, super, super lightweight. Let me comb it out a little bit. I mean, look at, this is all the hair that it has. So it's really great for updos. I want you to look at these ends. Can you see how kind of frizzy and frayed they are? I have not taken heat to this wig yet. And it's that way from having worn it down a few times. So now, because I love this color and I love the front of this wig, now I just wear it in updos. I don't feel the need to wear it down. Uh, and I, you know, at some point I'll probably take heat to these ends, but it works just fine in an updo. So all I do is I just sort of grab it all in the back. I just arrange, let me look at my mirror over here. I always have trouble doing updos on video because I'm very clumsy with them. And because this is low density, it's really easy to grab all of that hair. I mean, you could even just wear it in a ponytail if you want to. Smooth out this top here. I'm gonna just keep this real time, you guys, so that you can see how much I struggle so that you don't feel alone if you struggle. Cause I think half the battle with wig wearing is if we're not experienced with styling hair, it can be a frustration. All right, so then I grab it. So now I'm gonna just twist it. And because it's so long, I actually do almost like a partial little bun here. And I like to have some of that top spilling over. I think that looks really cute. So I've twisted it. I've done a partial little bun. And then I'm just going to stick this claw clip in. I have no idea how that looks. I should have washed my mirror here. And then I just arrange this top piece so that it spills over. One of the important things to do when you're putting a wig in an updo, make sure you're always tugging down at the sides here and at the nape so that you don't see the cap. Because the cap can sort of flip up as you're pulling the hair up and you wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. Let me just double check it. You see right here, 
just pulling it down. That looks good. That's really it. That's all I did. Now, I don't need to do anything additional with this piece because it already has these face framing layers. And so I don't have to like cut in any baby hairs or anything to make it look natural on the sides. But if your wig doesn't have that, ooh, it's getting a little warm in here. I'm getting shiny. We're going to buy one of these. And this is a thinning razor. I actually have a video where I show how to put my um, Bell Tress Peerless in an updo and I show how you can take this and you can just trim with this razor just a little bit of the hair like around the face. You don't have to trim a lot. You don't have to create a full face frame like this. But if you're struggling and if you have like where you can't maybe hide right here, you could pull out a little bit of the hair and you can just trim it up a little bit and you can create your own baby hairs. That is essentially how easy it is to put a synthetic wig in an updo. So let me summarize for you. Synthetic and heat friendly synthetic wigs, even if you don't like to wear them on a daily basis, can be a great addition to your wig wardrobe if you're gonna be spending a lot of time outside, in the sun, at the beach. You can always throw a headband on, you can put it in an updo like this. It's just a wonderful way to preserve human hair wigs. If you don't wear human hair wigs and you're just gonna wear synthetics, please keep in mind that the longer the heat friendly synthetic, regular synthetic will eventually do this as well. The longer the heat friendly synthetic, the harder wearing it for long periods of time is going to be on those fibers because if they rub on your clothing, that's really the enemy of heat friendly synthetic. You should take heat to your heat friendly synthetic regularly if you feel like it's starting to get frizzy, frayed or clumpy. I'll link the two videos that I've done on that topic in the description below so you can go watch them. I show how to do it on a straight wig. I show how to do it on a curly wig. If that's just too much for you and you don't want to have to do that, updos with your wigs is perfect. And it is perfectly acceptable to purchase a wig for the sole purpose of wearing it in an updo and no other way. This is a great wig for that. If you can find it on sale, go for it. If you have other wigs, let's say you don't want people to know you're wearing wigs. When I do this, I can pretty much, if I had another wig of any length in this color, except for super short, I don't think people would realize, especially if it already has a face fringe. So maybe you purchase a shorter piece in the same color that you can wear on a daily basis. And then when you don't want to wear that one, or if you want to do something fun with your hairstyle, you can have a longer piece in the same color with a similar front style that you can put into any type of updo you want. And now you've got not only something that's going to preserve your daily wear piece, it's going to make you feel normal with your wigs. The more we can style our wigs and wear them in the way that everybody likes to you know other people wear their hair the more we won't feel so separated by our hair loss journey I, I can tell you from first-hand experience every time i wear a wig in an updo like this i feel like i have my hair back i feel completely normal i don't feel at all like anybody's going to know this is a wig for the most part people don't notice your hair but especially if you style it the general public has no clue <laughs> that you can style wigs, that they look as natural as human hair. They just don't know. So the more you style your wig, the more it looks natural and normal to everyone around you. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. If you have some heat friendly synthetic wigs that you're struggling with, this could be a great way to get more wear out of them. You can take some heat to those ends if they're already frizzy. You can trim it up. Eventually, if these ends get really, really frizzy, I'm just gonna trim them up. This has got so much length, I can afford to cut it quite a bit before it really looks substantially different. That's another option. And if I were to trim these ends, I would use this because I'm not great with cutting and I would just go across the bottom and I would just trim all the way across. That would give it a really natural looking end, not a blunt cut and I don't have to worry about being perfect. All right, you guys, I hope this helped you. I'm here for you. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in my next video.